Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Thalo. Um, it's like Halo with a T at the front. Um, and I will be um, your instructor for uh, the next uh, hour here um, in this uh, seminar. Um, so um, we are going to be using um, something called uh, Google Colab for this, just so that you guys don't have to um, end up installing anything on your machines. Um, that would take some time. Um, so here, I'm just going to um, also paste this in the Zoom chat, um, Google Colab. Um, so when you, when you Google this, um, you can just go ahead and uh, click this first link here. Um, and it's going to ask, you know, hey, do you want to create a, a new notebook? That should be one of the buttons in the bottom. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do that. When you create a new notebook, um, it'll look something like this. Something like this. So here, um, this is um, what, what we have running here is a um, Python notebook. Um, and this is what we're going to be working on. If anyone does have uh, Python as well as uh, Jupyter notebooks installed on their own machine, you know, feel free to, log to follow along um, on, on your machine. But here, um, I'm just using um, Google Colab. Um, and yeah, you guys can just as well. Um, so, um, all, all uh, this interface is, so, so this is um, a, a little interface where we can write some Python code and run it real simply. It's actually not running on uh, your computer. Um, it is actually running on a Google computer somewhere. Um, so some, some Google server somewhere. This, this is actually a, a really cool tool that's used to like, you know, borrow some uh, Google uh, like GPU resources, some really fancy things, um, but we're just going to be using it um, for some more basic things. Um, all right, um, let's get into it. So um, if we are um, you know, really, really trying to um, take uh, Python as well as a library called uh, pandas um, in a little bit, we're going to be using um, this library, not, not just yet, but sure, I'll go ahead and run this and, and you know, the, the Google server will, will go ahead and fetch this library and import it for us. Um, we're going to be using these tools um, to do the same sort of things that one might do with Excel. Um, but Excel often has some limitations um, that um, we're going to be able to overcome. Um, namely, when you have some really large data sets, um, I mean, Excel might not even open up the whole file, depending on just how large it is. Um, another issue might be that, you know, let's say you have a file that's pretty large, but not so large that Excel doesn't open the whole thing. Even in that situation, certain operations can get really slow. Um, just um, certain things like some ifs, count ifs, um, you can just view lookups, um, can get really, really slow as you deal with a very large file. Um, so these are going to be um, some, some good reasons why we might want to make the switch um, from uh, Python, or sorry, from Excel to Python. Um, if anyone is just joining, I'm just going to type the name of the environment we're using one more time. It's just called Google Colab. Um, if you search this in a search engine, it should be uh, the first thing that comes up. And when you click on this, you'll just want to create a new notebook. New notebook should be uh, one of the big buttons that pop up. Um, and when you do, it'll look like this. Again, um, I can just go ahead and hit run here to run any of these cells. And, and inside any of these cells, I am just typing some Python code. Um, now, we're going to work our way up to dealing with spreadsheets in this thing. Um, first, let's, let's start with some smaller pieces um, to, to work our way up there. First, I'm just going to answer a couple uh, basic questions, like what is a uh, Python string? Um, I actually already created a string up here in this first cell, um, where I just asked to print hello world. This is just sort of the most basic thing that we do as we're learning any new programming language. Um, a string is anything written inside of quotation marks here. So um, anything in uh, single quotation marks um, or apostrophes, um, that is certainly a string. 
um, or in double quotation marks. Um, Python doesn't care whether you're using single quotation marks or double quotation marks. Um, it is going to call either one a string. Um, and a string is just a piece of text. So right in Excel, um, we might just type things directly into um, a cell. Um, but in Python, we need to specify, um, yes, this is a piece of text. Um, and Python knows that it is because we are writing it inside of quotation marks. Um, as long as you match the type of quote you use, Python doesn't care what it is. So right here, I have a single quote. I ended with a single quote. I have a double quote. I ended with a double quote. All right, cool. Um, now by themselves, all right, it is, it is good to know that that's um, what text looks like in Python, what strings look like. Um, but let's um, talk about how we can uh, save them, how we can store them right now. If I just ran this cell, and sure, I guess I, I can run it. Um, well, I, I see this piece of text, um, but I haven't actually put it anywhere. I don't actually have any way to refer to that. Um, right? Essentially, um, if, if we are trying to think about this as using Excel as a parallel, um, it's not actually in a cell. It's not actually, right? Once something's in a cell, you can refer to it. Here, I just sort of typed it out and it was gone. Um, so we'll have to know what is a Python variable. Um, so really all a variable is, um, is some, some uh, token, some name of something that we are storing in our computer somewhere. Um, here, I'm just going to give something a name. I'm just going to say my variable. I'm going to assign it a value. And here, this equal sign is um, called assignment. I am assigning something on the right to a variable on the left. And it will always be that way. Um, this would be some, some value over here on the right. Um, now, let's see. I don't actually have anything called some value. So if I try this, it'll give me an error. But let me just try this. Let me just say my variable gets assigned to the word hello. And now when I run this, now when I run this later on, later on, I could ask to look at my variable and hit run. And sure enough, it says, hello. All right, cool. I, I stored that piece of text somewhere. I can make reference to that piece of text, that same piece of text later on. All right, so that's really all a variable is and, and all a string is. All right, so cool. We, we've got some, some basic ideas of um, some simple, uh, parts of Python, some of the nuts and bolts. Um, well, we're, we're not actually at a spreadsheet yet. Um, so here, let's go ahead and create one. So of course, normally, we would read this in from a file, perhaps an Excel file. Um, for the sake of uh, this seminar, I'm not going to do that. Um, for the sake of the seminar, I'm just going to paste some code into uh, the Zoom chat that I want you guys to copy and run. So this is the, the code that I pasted here. Um, here, I, I just you know typed out some data. I, I suppose I'll, I'll mention how we would have, whoops, how we would have done this. So here, all I'm doing is creating a, um, in, in uh, Python, this is called a data frame. I will have to have already imported pandas as PD. This is the library we are making use of. Um, pandas is um, essentially for Python, um, what um, Microsoft Excel is for the Office suite. Um, this is um, what's allowing us to mess around with spreadsheets um, or you know, the equivalent of spreadsheets. Here, we're seeing that pandas actually calls these data frames. Um, in case anyone's wondering why, why this has such a cute name like pandas, um, it does just stand for uh, panel data and series. Um, and, and they decided to abbreviate it as pandas. Um, but anyway, um, so normally this is not what we would actually do, right? Usually, usually we, we would um, read data in from a, a file, probably. Um, and so if that is what I was doing, I, I would say, 
pd.read excel and i would put some you know some file name uh in inside of here and it would end up being in in quotation marks um, so this is this is how we would usually do this um, but i'm not doing this for the sake of uh, this class um, so i'm just going to go ahead and um, write what i what i pasted in in uh, the zoom chat there so, all right, I have a, a pretty pretty small uh, spreadsheet here, pretty small data frame. Um, ah, let's see, Susan says, I got an error message when I cut and paste. Um, here, let me just um, try to paste just this one line. Um, so here, um, I'm pasting this one more time, um, and that one, um, you should for sure be able to um, cut and paste by itself. Um, as long and it should run as long as you have earlier um not necessarily in the same cell i actually first did this up here but as long as prior to trying to run this um you did import pandas as uh, pd here i just added one more little line of code down here at the bottom um just df um, this is what ended up displaying it here um, so let me know if that if that works for you So all right, we've got this um, this little spreadsheet here. We're, we're just going to be using uh, this one as our example. Um, and okay, we we see some basic things, right? We see that uh, we've got some column headers here. Um, we see that uh, we've got uh, some some names of our rows. They're they're just these things in bold at the top and all that. All right, cool. Um, so what can we actually do with this thing? What what what? What should we do? I mean, I, I as you're seeing, unlike Excel, I can't just you know go around clicking on things and typing something in. Hmm, if I if I try to type something in, all right, cool, awesome, glad to hear it. If I try to type something in, right, it's not it's not going to work. It's not as uh, it, it's not the same type of interaction as we get with Excel. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do here? Um, what we're going to have to see is we're going to have to see how do we index a column in pandas? Um, and how do we index a row in pandas? As well as how do we index an individual cell in pandas? So let's just see, let's just see how we can um, isolate smaller pieces of this thing. Right now I just have the whole big thing um, and well as a as a whole big thing, there's there's some things I can do with it, but I probably I probably want to isolate some of these, and not just look at the whole thing. So let's see how to do that. Um, well, for grabbing just one column, I'm going to say the name of my data frame, which, you know, if if I'm comparing data frames to to spreadsheets, this is one sheet, right? The name of a data frame a data frame is always one sheet. It's not the same as one file, right? Files could have Bunch of tabs, but um, if we did want a bunch of tabs, we would have to have a bunch of data frames. Um, so here, to grab just one column, I'm going to add a pair of brackets after this, and I'm going to put some column name inside of here. So that's just an example. I, I'm not going to run that, but I'll say, okay, um, how about um, employee? And you'll note. Um, this column name is also in quotation marks. I'm representing this as just a piece of text, right? So it's got to have those quotation marks. If it's not, if it's not, I just want to point out, um, we are going to get an error. It is going to say, hey, there's there's nothing called employee. I don't actually have a variable called employee. That's right. It's not a, its own variable. It's just a column header, which Python is just going to be using pieces of text for. And so here we go. Here we go. Now I have isolated just this column, right? just the employee column. All right. Okay, cool. Cool. And right to be sure, I could have done it with any of these, with employee or hire underscore date or salary or group. All right. All right. Um, what if I want to grab just one row instead of a column? This is going to look a little bit different. I, I 
you'll know I will not be able to do the same thing. I will not be able to just have brackets and just say the name of one of my rows, right? Zero, zero is the name of one of my rows. Um, and this is actually not gonna work. This is not gonna work. It's gonna give me this key error. It's gonna say, hey, zero is, well, that, that's my key error. There, there is no column called zero. So right now it thinks that I'm still trying to talk about columns. In order to let it know that I am actually talking about the rows, I'm going to add. So after the name of my data frame, I'm going to add dot ILOC. Um, and this ILOC or ILOC um, just stands for, I'll, I'll let you know what it stands for in case anyone's curious, um, but it's not too important to know what it stands for. It just stands for integer location. Um, and now in a pair of brackets, I will put one of those numbers. So, okay, I want the, the integer location zero. And this is going to be just how I can grab one row. And here we're seeing it doesn't look too much like a row anymore. It's not represented horizontally. But okay, this is all of the information from this first row, right? I have Lisa, I have uh, you know, 2004, 10, 10. I have her salary, I have accounting. Okay, cool, cool. So this is just going to be um, df.iloc and some, some index. We call those indices um, in, in uh, pandas. Now, how do we index an individual cell? Well, to do this, we just need to combine both of these, both what I wrote on line three and line seven, um, really, you get to do this in what, whatever order you'd like. Um, so I can say, hey, my data frame at some column name dot ILOC at some index. And this is how it's going to work. This is how it's going to work. I'm going to say my, my name and my, my data frame. I, I name mine DF um, at employee dot ILOC zero. And all right, now I just get Lisa back. Or, you know, to be sure, I, I could have done anything. Hey, what is the group of uh, at, at row 11? Well, I, I see that up here. Okay, I should get accounting. Let's, let's just make sure that is what we get back. And all right, cool. I have here accounting. Awesome. So these are really, really our basic tools. Um, once we have these, if we did want to change a value, um, yeah, I'll just say, how, how can we change a value in our data frame? Well, I just need to grab one of these and I'm going to do some assignment just as though this were a variable. I'm going to assign some, some new value here. Right, so the, the same sort of thing that we were doing up here when I said, hey, I just want to create something called my variable and I want to assign it some value. Well, hey, I'm doing the same thing, but instead of just having the name of a variable, I have, well, df is a variable, but I'm just also using these tools, right, to, to index a column and index a row to grab some very specific location inside this variable, inside this data frame, and then assign it some new value. So for example, sure, let's just say that I do want to change uh, Barbara. Maybe she's no longer in accounting. Maybe she, she moved to engineering now. Um, so let's do that. I'll say this is engineering. And when I hit run, I ran this. I don't see anything. Well I, well, I do see all this stuff, but it's not actually what I'm, I'm looking for. It's not actually telling me what the data frame looks like right now. Let's just ask to look at the data frame again. And here we go. Sure enough, Barbara is now in engineering. So this much, you know, so far, this probably seems um, like, like a bit of overhead, you know, like, okay, well, you know, modifying things seems, seems like uh, a bit harder than just you know clicking on something and and typing stuff in, um, and and all right I guess this you you can sort of think of this as the uh, the the barrier to entry, um, but 
you know, once once we once we get over how um, how much we have to you know know, really we just have to know this stuff um, and and assignment. Sure, we do have to know about that. But once once we get over you know knowing this stuff, we will be able to do some really powerful, cool things a whole lot faster, a whole lot faster than Excel will be able to. So all right, so far, so far we haven't seen much. So far we've just grabbed from a row, grabbed from a column, or grabbed a particular cell, and also been able to update those values. Um, let's go ahead now and see how we can do um, some more powerful things. I'm going to start simple. I'm going to start simple. Let me just say, let's start with aggregation. How do we aggregate in, in pandas? And right by aggregate, I just mean, say, taking a look at all the salaries here and taking the average or summing them or um, taking, taking something else like that. And here I have a nice little list of these. Here we go. We have a nice little handful of functions that we can use. Um, I, for, for the time being, I guess I'll just say, you know, ignore the NP dot in front of these. Um, but these, these are really just written here because um, pandas is in turn built on top of another Python library called NumPy, which is often abbreviated as NP. Um, let me paste just this little table um, into the chat again. Um, so this table, this is not actual code. I mean, these, these are these are the names of, of these functions. Yes, sum and prod and mean and standard, you know, STD for standard deviation and all this sort of thing. Um, but how do we actually end up running this? How do we end up using this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and again start with my data frame. So here I just I just have the whole data frame, just called DF. I probably just want to do this to um, the salaries. Um, so, so here, I'm just going to take an average. I'm just going to say, hey, what's the average of all the salaries here? Well, OK, we saw how to grab just one column, our brackets, and then the name of one of these columns. OK, so mine is just salary. And now I'm just going to add dot sum parentheses. Or no, that's right. I, I, I didn't say I was some of these. I said I was going to take an average. OK, so dot mean. And it maybe seems a little bit silly to have just an empty pair of parentheses on the end here. Um, but not to get too into the weeds, I'll just say we do need that, that empty pair of parens. If we don't have it, um, uh, well, this is what we get. This is not a mean. This is certainly not a mean. Um, so let's add that empty pair of parentheses on the end there. And now, OK, cool, we actually do have the average salary. All right, cool, cool. Um, and to be sure, right, I could have done um, really any of these. Um, I could have said, hey, what is the sum of all of those salaries put together? Um, oh, whoops, I misspelled salary. There we go. There we go, all right, cool. And we've got just, just the sum of all of those. So cool. Using these aggregates is, is really quite simple. Um, I am just um, aggregating everything in this column together and taking a sum. Or aggregating everything together and taking the mean. Um, so OK, just to, just to check out what we've done so far, um, all we've done really is we've said, OK, this is how we grab a column or a row or a individual cell. This is how we can update values in individual cells. And this is how we can aggregate things together. Um, just things like dot mean, dot sum. Uh, and right by aggregate, I mean that any of these, using any one of these, is going to take a bunch of values and spit out just one answer. Right, The same sort of thing that you might do in Excel. Um, well, um, 
hmm, getting an error message. Um, do you wanna do you wanna um, paste the line um, that you wrote where it's telling you the the error? Um, so for example, if I if I write this, my error is um, pointing to this line. It's pointing to this line 18, um, and and I would for example paste this line right here, this line of code. Um, df salary dot me. Hmm, that is strange because it looks like salary is spelled right. Um, hmm. Um, if you look at df, df um, does look like this, right? It does have all of these, um, all of these here. Let's see what is this saying. Um, do 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 do. Um, oh, oh, sorry. So that's that's um, that's not actually a um, an error there. Um, it, it is a warning, um, but um, yeah, pandas does have some some warnings sometimes. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, don't don't worry too much about that warning. Um, it it is actually working. Um, you are getting the uh, ninety five thousand at the bottom there. Um, so errors are going to look a, a little bit different from that. Um, but yeah, for, for the time being, I'll just say, you know, don't worry too much about that warning. Um, but this is running. This is giving you the right answer. All right, cool. So now that now that we're at this point, um, now I think we can start um, really building up to, um, say, being able to do um, some sum ifs um, or, say, something like a, a count if. Um, and, and I suppose something that I, I did not include here is you can um, you can certainly um, uh, use count um, to you know just just count how many uh, how many rows. So sure, I mean that that is an aggregate. I, I I'll I'll mention that. So we could just call dot count and say okay, well there were 12, 12 rows there. But this is probably not that exciting so far because, well, okay, there were just 12. And then, yeah, any of these, if I count any of these, I'll get the same answer, that same 12. Um, but, okay, um, how are we going to do this? We, we sort of, you know, we already saw the sum part or, or the count part, um, but the if part is what we're missing. And that's, that's going to be a little bit trickier. Um, so let's look at how we can do some conditionals using Python and pandas. So um, conditionals are gonna, going to look like this. I'm going to say um, my data frame at my column um, followed by some comparison operator um, and I'll just keep it simple for now, some number. So what this might look like is I might say, well, the name of my data frame is DF. The name of the column that I'm looking at is salary. As far as comparison operators, we're gonna, we're gonna dive into these in a moment, but I'll just use greater than for starters and greater than, oh, let's say 80, one, two, three, 80,000. If I just run this by itself, Let's see what we end up getting. We end up getting, this is actually called a Boolean mask. Um, it is just as long as the original set of salaries, um, but all we're seeing is a bunch of true false values. So what am I actually supposed to do with this? What am I actually supposed to do with this mask? I'm just gonna, I don't have to do this in two separate lines and store that result into a variable called mask. But I'm just going to try to do this because I think it um, makes the syntax look a little bit simpler. So once I have one of these things, this, this set of true false values, I'm actually going to use that as an index. I'm going to say df brackets this, this mask. I'm putting this mask in the brackets just the same as if I were asking for a column. Now I know this is the same syntax for asking for a column, but here we're actually going to see that we're limiting not columns, but rows. So here, now what did I end up getting back? I got back only 
the rows that had salaries greater than 80,000. So, okay, cool. I took some condition, some if essentially, and I said, okay, if the salaries are greater than 80,000, I wanna see those rows. Let's break this down. Let's see other things that we could have done here. So we should probably mention the comparison operators that are available to us. Um, there's just six of these. So just six comparison operators. They are as follows. Um, double equals, exclamation mark equals, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. So let me just label these. This is equals, not to be confused with that single equals. I, I know this can be very confusing that, right? One of them is just a single equals, the other is a double equal. Um, but confusingly enough, they do mean two entirely different things. Um, the single equals is when we are assigning to a variable. Right? I'm doing a little bit of assignment. I, I wanted to save this Boolean mask. That's what this gave me back. I wanted to save it somewhere so that I could use it later. Right? Or you know, we did the same thing earlier on with our data frame. Um, but this double equals is asking if two things are equal to each other. So, so all, and all six of these are going to be asking some sort of question. All six of these are saying, hey, is this true or false? They're asking a yes, no question. So then we also have not equals, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and finally, less than or equal to. So here, I know this is a bit much. Let me just throw this into the chat there. So here we've got six comparison operators. So here, what, what, I, what I was saying before was um, just, okay, I wanna see wherever the salary is greater than this. I could instead, I could say, hey, I wanna see the data frame. Oops, I, I wanna see where the salary is exactly the 90,000. And here, all right, it looks like there's only one place where this is the case. Now up above, I did this on two separate lines. Here, I'll just do the same thing on one line. I mean, really, you could just take this and plug it in right here. And that's what I'm gonna do. Instead of, you know, I'll cut out the middleman. I'm not gonna create a separate variable. So I'm just gonna wrap this in brackets and put the name of my data frame on the left side there. And so now I'm seeing, okay, there is only one row where the salary is exactly 90,000 and it is Jake. Or perhaps we might wanna do the, the opposite. Maybe maybe I'll say, hey, where, where is, are the salaries not equal to 90,000? All right, cool. Now it's everyone except for Jake, right? That was, that was row three. There is no longer a row three. There's, there's everyone except for Jake. All right, cool. And of course, sure, we could do any of these. I'm not gonna run through you know, all six of them, but all right, these all exist. These are just our six basic comparison operators. So how can we combine this? How can we combine this with say sum or uh, count, right? With, I wanna combine one of these with some conditionals. That's really what's going to end up, you know, producing the same effect as a sum if or a count if, something like that. Let's check this out. I'm just gonna create a new, a new cell to, to talk about this. So in order to perform a, a sum if, um, we need to combine conditionals, conditionals with aggregates. Um, and so here, hopefully uh, what we're seeing is that we can just take these smaller pieces, these smaller pieces of code um, and, and sort of build them up kind of like Legos, right? Just, okay, here's, here's a brick that I'm, I'm building another brick on. Um, so I don't wanna sum the whole thing. I don't wanna sum the whole thing first. So first I'm gonna do the conditional part. Let's just say that I do want to um, count how many, maybe I wanna answer the question, how many um, 
you know, how many rows, how many employees essentially um, have salaries over 80,000? Perhaps that's, that's what I'm uh, answering the question with, right? We could end up doing this with a uh, count if. I guess I wrote some if up here. Let me just change it to match the example that I'm doing. All right. First, I'm going to use a conditional to only see rows um, where salaries are over 80,000. Um, so how do I do this with a conditional? Well, I'll say, where is the salary, oops, where is the salary greater than 80,000? This is what we wrote before. And okay, we get back just this Boolean mask. And then we can plug that in right here. We can plug that into our pair of brackets and just see that entire thing. Once we've got this entire thing coming back, we can treat this, we can treat this just like its own original data frame. So, well, I don't want to see all the columns. I only want to see the salary column, right? I'm not, I'm not counting everything. I just want to count uh, one of these. And I guess for something like count, it, it's different when you're actually summing or taking an average or something. But for something like count, it, it will actually um, work. Perhaps it seems bizarre that it gives us four different number sevens. That, that's sort of why I wanted to, to not do that. But OK, I mean, I guess if you just wanted to see with your eyes that the answer was seven, sure, there it is. Um, but here, let me just first restrict it to just one of these, one of these columns. There we go. Now I'm seeing just those. Of course, here we can just count with our eyes because there's so few. But naturally, if we were dealing with a very large spreadsheet, um, we would not be able to do that. So I'll go ahead and add dot count at the end here and get back the single value seven. Um, and I'll just I'll just mention that you know if this were some very very large uh, data frame, some very large spreadsheet we were working with, um, this would run um, you know approximately as fast um, as as um, it just ran right now. If if we had say you know two million rows, um, this would also run um, really really fast. So cool. Um, Let's just see an example with uh, some if. Let's say, um, you know, what is the um, total dollar amount of all salaries? Um, I don't know. I'll just I'll just flip it around. Um, of all salaries uh, that are less than eighty thousand, um, or I'll say you know eighty thousand or less. I'll, I'll just make it a less than or equal to. So here we might want to know, okay, how do I grab just those salaries first? Um, well, here I'm just going to say where they are less than or equal to 80,000. Um, we don't see anything because I was just doing an assignment, but if we ask to look at the mask, look at this Boolean mask, this mask of true false values, here we can see it. So if we plug this in as our index, we'll get back you know, rows 0, 1, 5, 10, and 11. So let's try that. I'll say, hey, I want to look at my data frame at that mask. And sure enough, here, here they are, 0, 1, 5, 10, and 11. And you know, here, because I'm summing, I really do want to isolate just the salary uh, column. Salary. And now I'll call dot sum to aggregate this and end up with, OK, cool. 375,000. Awesome. Awesome. Um, now, there are some, um, there are some uh, more uh, complicated things we could do. So, so far, so far, my, my conditionals were pretty uh, simple. Um, I was you know, each time I was doing one of these, I was just saying, okay, where this is equal to that, or where this is greater than that, or, or, or less than that. Um, let's see how we could do some slightly more uh, complicated conditionals. And, you know, it's probably likely that, that at some point you'll want to do something more complicated than just this. 
So let me go ahead and add another cell here. Uh, let's um, expand our conditionals. So okay, sure. First we have, and I'll just I'll just copy the same things to to have it for reference. So all right, I do have just those six. Um, there's also three logical operators um, that we can use. So right, often um, we aren't just trying to say, hey, where a value is less than this, we might want to say where it's between two numbers, where it's in a range. I, I, I want to grab um, right, the salaries that are between, um, I don't know, uh, 40,000 and 60,000, right? Something like that. Um, we're going to see three logical operators. We have an ampersand for and. We have a vertical pipe for or. And we have a tilde character um, for not. Um, so as far as whoop, as far as Boolean logic goes, um, these these are the three existing logical operators. Um, so let's see how these are going to work. Let's see how these are going to work. Well, um, here, let me just look at my salaries one more time so I can grab a reasonable range. Um, let's say I want just salaries between. Uh, 80,000 and 90,000. Um, well, if I just ask where they are greater than or equal to 80,000, sure, I'll, I'll get too many trues. Right? There's, there's many more of these um, that are not um, between, and let me just write what I'm doing. Um, um, we want salaries that are between 80,000 and 90,000. Okay, this, this was too many, but sure, it did give me a lower bound. I'll do the same thing on the other side, okay, where they're less than or equal to, what, less than or equal to 90,000. Okay, again, this, this is too many, but it is giving me an upper bound. I want to be able to combine these together. Um, you'll note, I cannot just put an ampersand between them and, and expect this to work. There, there's one more step. There's just one more little step here, which is that when using logical operators, we must wrap our conditionals inside parentheses. So in other words, I have to grab this one on the left and add a pair of parentheses around it. And I have to grab this one on the right add a pair of parentheses around. Now let's run it and we'll see, oh, we have, we only have four true values now. Of course, we have to actually use this to make sure that those are the correct ones, right? Maybe, maybe we miswrote this something or, or, or something. Um, so again, I'll just do this in a separate line and then use that mask inside a pair of brackets here to index my data frame. And there we go. Ah, this does actually look good. This does actually look good. And and perhaps um, you know we we didn't want to see the salaries. Maybe we want to see the names of the people who are making that amount. So you know I could combine this with um, employee and say, okay, these are the four names of the people who are uh, making that amount. All right, cool. Um, let's see. Um, let, let me let me um, now move on to um, or so and what does logical and mean? Well, this really means that we are combining conditions um, to become more restrictive, right? When we combine these both, we had fewer true values than either of those separately. Um, the difference between and and or they're both for combining. We're both trying to combine conditions, but here it's to become um, more, more lax, um, less restrictive. Um, so an example of this might be, um, we want salaries that are, I'll just say outside the range of 80,000 to 
90,000. I want everyone else's salaries. Um, well, again, I could ask for just the salaries um, that are less than 80,000. And okay, now I have just three of these. And I could also ask for the salaries that are uh, greater than 90,000. And I just have uh, four of those. Um, if, I, if I try combining these together with and, let's just try that. Uh, again, I need my parentheses. Can't forget, can't forget our parentheses. If I try combining these with an and, well, everything's false. Right? I, I'm now being way too restrictive. There are no salaries that are both less than 80,000 and greater than 90,000. That's not how and works. I need to use an or, which in pandas is going to be a vertical type. And here we go. Now I should have seven true values there. Again, if I um, overwrite that mask and try to use this one more time, I will see, OK, cool. These are all of the um, all the rows where salary was outside. Boy, I got Google talking. To me. Um, all right, we're we're outside of this range of, of eighty thousand to ninety thousand. All right, cool. Um, finally, um, I'll just mention um, how uh, not works. Um, of course, with with these uh, simple ones, you know, you, you might be saying, well. Do I, do I really need not? I have not equals, or right? If I wanted something that is um, not less than, couldn't I just use greater than or equal to? And and yes, it may seem like not is sort of um, pointless while we're just dealing with simpler ones. Um, but you know, I, I will say that you know there there are certainly circumstances where not might be useful um, that we don't quite have time to to cover in this class. But all right, not is a perfectly good operator. Um, maybe we want to say you know where our salaries um, not, I, I don't know, I'll just say not less than um, 100,000. Um, and of course, right, you, you certainly could um, end up doing this, um, you know, just by saying greater than um, 100,000. But I'm just going to try to um, type this in very literally. I'm just going to read this very literally. Um, and so I might say, hey, where is this sal salary less than 100,000? OK, let's make it the opposite of that. Let's wrap this in parentheses and put a tilde at the front. And now I just have the exact opposite set of true false values. And I can use this inside of my brackets to index my data frame wherever this showed up as true. And sure enough, OK, these are the ones that are not less than 100,000. Cool. So nice, we've got these logical operators. Nice. Let me go ahead and um, add these in um, just as a uh, paste there into the Zoom chat. All right, cool. Um, now, let's just see how we could do. Um, something uh, a little bit more complicated. Um, I'll say, um, what are, um, yeah, what are the um, higher dates of employees with salaries greater than the average salary? For the higher dates of employees, with salaries greater than the average. And here, I'll, I'll why don't I you know, not take all the fun? Let, let's take just a few minutes. Um, I know this is a little bit more complicated than, than what we were looking at. Let's just take three minutes to see um, if you guys can, can do this one. And here, why not? I'll just, I'll just also put a, a little bit of a simpler one up here. Um, maybe um, what are the uh, names of um, employees, um, or I don't want to just do the names. Let's let's at least do something that seems more like a a um, sum if or a count if. Um, maybe I'll say how many of the employees um, have um, 
are, are in the uh, engineering group. So here, this one is not just dealing with numbers, but we're asking where something is exactly, and as a hint, I'll say where something is exactly engineering. Right, so these conditionals can certainly be used with, with text as well. Um, so here, this is the easier one. This is certainly the harder one. Um, let's just take three minutes to, to, to try to uh, run over this one. And do let me know if you guys have any questions as you're working on it. Um, let's see. Um, ah, so it says name engineering is not defined. Um, you will you will want to make sure that engineering is in quotation marks, um, that it is being treated like a piece of text. If it's not in quotation marks, it is going to think that you have a variable called engineering. Um, that that at some point we did something like this. Uh, but right, um, we we did not do this, and we're not looking for some variable. Um, we do want to make sure it's just in quotation marks. Yep. No worries, easy, easy enough to do. All right, all right. So let's come back together. Um, I know that is you know probably probably not as much time as uh, you guys would have liked for right your your very first uh, uh, exercise with this stuff. Um, but um, in the interest of time, I am gonna uh, start going over these now. Um, so first, um, for this harder one, I'll just do them in the order they appear on my screen. Um, for this harder one. Um, we ultimately want to end up looking at the higher dates, um, but we are not uh, limiting what we're seeing based on the higher dates. We're limiting what we're seeing um, based on salaries. And there's actually something else that we need to know. We need to know the average salary. I, I don't know what that is right now, right? I, I don't have the average salary. I just have all the salaries. Um, so first, to get that average, and right, this is the average of the whole thing, I'm just going to say df brackets salary dot mean. All right, that's my average salary. Just to simplify things, I'm going to store it into a variable. I'm just going to call mine avg underscore salary. You can name yours whatever you'd like. 
but this is what I'm naming mine. Um, then now we want to find out, OK, which salaries are greater than that number? So I want to say, OK, the data frame where the salary, whoops, where the salary is greater than average salary. So before, I was just plugging in um, literal numbers here, right up, up here. I was just typing in actual numbers, things like 80,000, 90,000. Um, but here, I am replacing it with a variable, right? So the same place where a number might go, a variable holding on to a number, right? This is just holding on to 95,000. Um, one of those might also go here. And here we go, we're seeing this Boolean mask. We're seeing this mask of true false values. Um, and all right, I'm just gonna keep everything on separate lines. So I'm just gonna store that into a, another variable. I'm just naming mine Boolean underscore mask. And then I might say, okay, let's look at the data frame wherever we saw true values here. And this gives us these four, all right? We're, we're almost done. There's one more thing that we wanted. The question was asking, what are the higher dates of those employees? So, OK, here we're seeing all four. I'm just going to add another pair of brackets on the end here. And inside a pair of quotation marks, I'm going to put higher underscore date. And now there we go. There we go here with um, these three steps, right? Getting the salary mean, comparing the salaries to that mean, specifically with a greater than, and then combining it all together and grabbing the higher date. This is how we can do that first one. Cool. Um, now, um, how about that easier one? Um, how many of them, the employees are in the engineering group? Um, so, I want to end up asking, much much like what we were doing before, you know, I kept just doing it with the salary column. Um, now we're going to ask some question about the group column. So, okay, if I'm asking a question about the group column, I sure want to grab just that column first. Gift brackets and quotes group. Where is this equal to engineering? And here, ah, here we go. It thinks that I was talking about a variable called engineering. Let's put some quotation marks around it. And there we go. Now it's working. Now I've got my Boolean mask. And now let's look at this thing. Wherever those were true, OK, here we go. Here they all are. And as we're seeing, these are all people in the engineering group. Um, the answer, or the, the question was asking, how many of them are there? I mean, of course. This one's so small, it's easy to, enough to count ourselves, five. Um, but um, let's go ahead and make the code count for us. Um, we could say just dot count, though here, oddly enough, they're giving us you know, one answer per column. Um, so in order to not get four different answers, well, I mean, they're all the same, but in order to not get four duplicate answers, um, let me go ahead and just restrict it to any one of these. Really, it doesn't matter which one you do, um, you could have, you know, put group here, you could have put employee here, whatever, um, dot count. And now we'll see, okay, cool. I'm just getting that one value five back. All right, cool, cool. So nice, this is how we might answer questions like these, um, right? This, this last one being the same sort of thing that we might do with a count if, um, but, uh, here um, it is, you know, I know we haven't actually looked at this with a very large um, uh, file, um, but, you know, to be sure, um, after this class, you, you certainly could try this out. If you do have your own very large Excel file, you could try this out by um, asking to create some data frame um, by reading some uh, file name, as long as this, um, you know, I know we didn't talk about specifically how to, how to write out a full file path um, to some file, but um, you know, this, this sort of thing would, would certainly um, be how we could open up some you know, Excel file um, in, in Pandas, um, as long as we had this pointing to the, the exact file. Um, all right, um, so 
cool. That um, just about brings us to um, the top of the hour. Um, before we sign off, um, let me ask, well, let me say two things. Um, one, um, yeah, I will go ahead and, you know, it, in case anyone um, is interested, I, I will go ahead and share um, the link to this notebook with you guys. Let me, let me um, just make sure it's the link where you guys can view, but not edit. Okay, there we go. Um, so here um, in the chat, I'm pasting um, the link here. Um, so that you guys can can view this notebook as well. I, I do encourage you to um, save a copy um, to your own drives, um, just because I'm I'm not sure exactly how long um, uh, yeah, this will this will uh, stay up for. Um, so yeah, please feel free to save a copy of this um, into your own Google Drive. It is a pretty small file, right? Nothing nothing too big. It's really just a bunch of text. Um, and uh, let me um, turn it over to you guys for questions. Any any questions? Anything at all? Nope. Um, all right. All right then. Um, yeah. Um, unless you guys ah writing one. Out. Okay. Okay. Here I'll uh, I'll. I'll... Um, give you guys a moment. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for thanks for coming by, Ed. Um, uh, um, so, so, uh, Frank asked more, more complicated stuff, um, Monte Carlo situations, uh, or simulations. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we don't, uh, have time to cover Monte Carlo, uh, simulations in a, um, yeah, free seminar like this, but I guess this is probably, probably something that Noble Desktop wants me to bring up. Um, but if, you head over to, let me find this thing. Here we go. If you head over to, whoops, um, here, I and, and don't worry, Susan, I'm about to get to your question in a moment, um, to uh, the Noble Desktop website. Um, they do um, certainly offer, I guess I should say we do, um, certainly offer um, yeah, Python uh, machine learning um, and, um, I, I believe specifically uh, Monte Carlo situations ought to be covered in um, the uh, yeah, automation for finance class, um, where where um, yeah, where Monte Carlo simulations certainly are um, a, a relevant um, topic. Um, let's see. Um, uh, now I get a better understanding, but if I use Excel mostly for finance, doing budgets and planning, this still doesn't seem um, easier than Excel. Is that just case specific? So um, it certainly um, is uh, a matter of you know, what you're trying to accomplish. Um, one of the things that I was really um, you know, trying to highlight uh, today um, was you know, about efficiency, about how um, if, you know, we've got um, especially a very large spreadsheet, um, right? Excel can really end up slowing down and just taking a while and, and um, you know, slowing, slowing down you know, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, and right with um, Python and Pandas, um, the Python library, um, we can certainly spe uh, speed up um, a lot of these operations. Um, in terms of what you can accomplish, you know, let's let's say I'm not dealing with something really big. I, I am just dealing with um, you know some budgets, and maybe I've got I don't know um, a couple dozen or a couple hundred rows. Um, in terms of what you can accomplish, yeah, there is a whole lot of overlap. There's a ton of things that you can accomplish with um, Python that you can do just as well um, in Excel. You know, as long as we're talking about um, you know small things. Um, Depending on what you're doing, you know, you're talking about expense budgeting and planning. Um, 
perhaps you'd like a way to, um, and here I'm just, I'm just imagining, I'm not sure exactly um, what all uh, goes into your expense budgeting and planning, um, but let's say um, we are trying to create some uh, nice, um, I don't know, visualizations of, you know, the, the month, um, the, the budget for the month going forward and the next month after that, et cetera. Um, you know, Excel has um, its own set of uh, ways to visualize things, though every time you want to visualize, you know, you want to create a new graph, um, we do have to do this manually. Um, one of the nice things about Python, and, and you know, we, I know we didn't talk about any data visualization today, um, but there is another wonderful, wonderful um, uh, library, whoops, if I can spell it, um, there is another wonderful um, Python library that's great for data visualization. This is certainly not the only library for data, data visualization in uh, Python. Um, excuse me. Um, but um, right with Python, we can do things programmatically. Um, and so if I'm going to end up making, uh, say, a, a graph of what's going on, um, you know, and I'm going to make one of these every month. Um, I could end up writing some code that will, you know, pull the correct data um, and and make the same sort of plot. Um, I, and I could do that you know, today and in, in uh, August. And I could also run that same code um, next month in September. Um, and just being able to, you know, have um, you know blocks of code that we um, can run programmatically and have the same thing happen, um, right? That's that's really another place where um, Python ends up shining um, as opposed to, um, right, just um, making these sorts of things manually in uh, Excel. I know the example that I'm talking about right now is just plotting, but what I'm saying is certainly not exclusive to making data visualizations. Um, you know, you could say the same thing for many such operations um, that you may, you know, have to do um, repetitively, um, you know, across uh, a data set or across, you know, the, the many months of the year. Thank you for your help. Um, I've been practicing uh, this for a while. I'm pretty much an expert in Excel. And um, I find this to be useful, especially if you're using multiple workbooks. And if you have to do changes like that, uh, I do see what some people's concerns may be saying that it's not as uh, easy as Excel. It is easy once you already know what the Excel file contains. If you're familiar with your data book, then you actually know your conclusion. So it makes it somewhat simple. But if you just get a, a new workbook and you have to kind of, you know, facilitate, you don't have that big array where you can see on your monitor immediately. Yeah. So I think that's where it's somewhat of a challenge, but I think overall, I actually like it because it gave me a purpose to really use Python as opposed to doing book activities. This is mm -hmm. a real world situation that I can use in my job. So I thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I, I absolutely agree with, uh, with, with what Joseph said just then. Um, I, I think one of the other things that um, can seem um, you know, a lot harder is right. Excel is um, it's just it's very graphical, right? You're you're seeing the whole uh, you know workbook. You're you're you know clicking around and typing things in you know right where you want them. There is a bit of a learning curve to to Python, right? Like like what what we were doing up here, um, just like the basic um, where where did I put it? Um, yeah, just like um, you know grabbing particular columns or grabbing particular um, rows. Um, you know, it's not just clicking on that column or, or clicking on that row or something. Um, so there is a little bit of a, a learning curve. Um, and, you know, at first, you know, if this is if this is certainly your first day seeing all this stuff, it probably, I don't know, probably seems a little bit daunting. Um, but, um, you know, as as with all things, you know, this is a, a learnable skill. It has something of a learning curve, but I would say in, in the grand scheme of, you know, programming and, and programming languages, um, you know, picking up, picking up uh, something like Python um, and being able to do um, these sorts of things um, is way easier than um, just than many, many other uh, programming languages. 
Yeah, thanks so much for coming um, and um, have a good one.